Hey folks, welcome back to the Talos Principle 2 and the High Plain. We've just arrived, and a couple of people want to speak with us, so let's see what they have to say here. Linux. Nice to be outside the city, isn't it? Uh, what's your reaction? I handled it pretty much the way we talked about. I am proud of you. Our understanding of the world is going to change because of your decision to share that data. Okay, fair enough. And then over here is Cryer, I think, our borderline propagandist who I do not like very much. What can I do for you, 1K? What do you think? What do you think about my choice regarding the Somnodrome? I don't know if sharing the truth so openly was a good choice. It's hard to predict the consequences of such an action. Yeah. That's why I don't like you. You say you're a journalist, but then you're like, well, the truth is only for the people who can be trusted with it, right? Dick. All right, let's head out and start exploring. It's a very interesting area, very beautiful. We've got a huge park in the middle here. Almost like an amphitheater. Looks like there's something of interest to be found as well. Ah, that's the Golden Gate. All right. We're pretty close to having these unlocked. One more visit, eight more puzzles, and one more visit to the megastructure. And these things will open up for us. What else can we find around here? Uh, I would love to locate Stratos early so I don't have to worry about him. Worry about finding him. Uh, we do have, it looks like, a Prometheus puzzle up here, or rather the star... Prometheus star up here and we can get a sense of where he's looking so he's looking northwest pretty much so from from the uh, yeah from the transport area we want to head northwest if we want to find Prometheus's spark looks like Yakut has something to say hey 1k anything I can do for you so Athena designed a spaceport what do you make of that? Oh man, I love the idea of going up there. There's so much to see on Earth, but there, the possibilities are literally endless. There's things out there we can barely imagine. And if you think about it, we're basically built for it. We could travel in sleep mode. The only resource we need is energy. We can land on planets with minimal atmosphere or heavy gravity. Imagine seeing a sun a thousand times the size of our own. Imagine planets where life has evolved from completely different materials. And you know what? I think it would make us love the Earth even more. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. I agree. You rock, Yakut. You're great. I think, I think Yakut is the best of the androids. I think he's my favorite. Like, Byron's good... But he's a little too... He's a little too extreme, I think. Just a little bit too extreme and a little bit too... fed up with everyone else not agreeing with him. Yakut is just... sunny and charming and bright and optimistic and hopeful. I really like Yakut a lot. We've got these huge rings surrounding the spaceport. Presumably it's some type of... accelerator? Yeah, look, it's a giant spiral, almost. Or no, it's not. But maybe it's like a magnetic accelerator? No, it's just some rings. Who knows how it works, but it's really interesting to look at. I'll say that. Let's see. I don't know if we can get up over here. There's nothing on the compass, but that doesn't mean Stratton couldn't be back here somewhere. Like this, this artwork. What is this here for? Where is this leading? What is that up there? Is that something? No, it's not a, it's not a, a built thing. It's just a pile of rock. Okay. Let's follow the path. It's back here for a reason. I'm not sure what. There's something down there. Hmm. Okay. Let's keep going. I think this is a lost puzzle ahead of us.
Oh, it's another amphitheater style deal. Interesting. Okay. This has to be a lost puzzle, right? Yeah. Okay. Should we check it out since we're here? It's called alternator. So we've got two connectors. Oh, ooh, interesting. A rotating gate. So we do know that we connect we can connect this to two different sources if we find a second source and it will alternate back and forth. So like we can do this and we can come over here and do this and it should roll back and forth. Hmm. So when the gate is closed, the red one the red one works. We need to figure out a way to make the blue one work when hmm. How would this happen? When it's cut off. Yeah, when it's cut off like that. Uh No, but then the blue one doesn't work. Um, like this? So that'll be blue. No, that'll be red, but then blue doesn't work. Hmm. Oh, through here, like this. No. We can get in here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I get it. Um, do I get it? Hold on. So, when the gate is down, that works. We need something that works when the gate is up but not when it's down. How would that happen? How would that work? What if we point this at both? And then do this. So when the gate is up, it does blue. When the gate is down, it does red. There we go. Okay. So it'll alternate. There we go. There's a lost puzzle solved. In their notes, Athena and Cornelius called what they were doing the Noema Project. But in one case, vision, they just called it the machine. Because when you strip away all the fancy rhetoric, that's all it is. It's not a source of meaning or purpose. It's just another machine. I mean, I agree with that. It's a, it's a machine. It's a tool they built. And as we've seen, the only way to create meaning in the universe is for humans or consciousnesses to take action. So they built a tool to help them take the actions they wanted to take, but the machine itself has no deep meaning, no purpose, no mysteries to it. It's just a tool. If we can prove that we're willing to risk the dangers to grasp the flame, they will entrust the machine to us to allow us to continue their legacy and make the choices we want to make, pursue the future we want to build and create. Which I think is fair on their part. I think it's noble and generous. And I think it's a remarkable testament to their ability to persevere in hope even after the loss of their daughter. Which must have been just a devastating blow for them. Alright, let's keep exploring. I think we have no choice but to go back the way we came. And then proceed around the edge some more. I'm really looking for Stratton first, and then I want to solve the star puzzles. If I can. And what is this? What 
What is this? Just more artwork with no real purpose that we can see, perhaps? Okay, it seems that way. Let's continue around the edge here. This should look down on... No, not quite yet. This should look down on that. Okay. Anything down here? Not really. Okay. There is a pathway down there that we didn't have access to. I'm not sure where that would lead. Or did we have access to it? We might have. I might have missed it. We don't need to fall down there just yet. We can we can go around this this path up here. Kind of follow this edge and see where it leads and then drop down if we really want to. Was there a way... Yeah, I guess there was a way up there and around if we wanted it. I just missed it. Not sure what's over there, but I'll try and remember that that's there. Looks like maybe we can kind of get towards it from this side. This is one of the support structures for the tower. I don't know whether we can get into these or not. So there's the path leading up from the amphitheater with the lost puzzle in it. We've got a large spire here for no discernible reason. Who are you? Is that Byron? I'm tired of waiting. No. Sometimes I think Mother is stalling. Like, we could already be done with this, but she's afraid of what will happen if we contact New Jerusalem. Our discoveries are amazing, world-changing. But how much longer can we sit around on this island? None of it means anything if people don't know about it. Can they really be so afraid of change? They can indeed, my dear. It's one of the legacies of human nature that you guys have as a consequence of your ancestors. Yeah, fear of change has probably stifled more hope and more innovation and more betterment than any other fear in human history. I'd have to think about it to see if I really wholeheartedly agree with that, but... Oh, nice. We found Stratton. But I think it's got a kernel of truth in it, at least. All right, Stratton, what do you have to say? I see these beings, these children of a future age, wandering around an island more fantastical than Atlantis itself, looking desperately to find themselves. I reach out to them, but they cannot see me. I speak to them, but I do not know if they can hear me. Am I being punished? Are the gods playing some cruel trick on me? Why can I remember so little? What is this sorrowful voice I hear whispering such terrible thoughts? I must use what remains of my mind. I must understand hmm so whatever he is it's like a fragment of Stratton constructed from his works like a like a mind built based on what can be extrapolated from what we do know of him but obviously the real Stratton died millennia ago so he can't remember the details of his life because we didn't have that to plug in uh, I do notice, interestingly, there is a gravity plate here. Oh, hold on. Uh, but it's just to get a Prometheus spark, which we don't really need. And I don't think there's a way inside these. Look at these, look at these hands grasping and supporting the tower with the rings. Uh, Alright, so I'm heading now for a question mark that I saw. Here we go. It's over here. 
Let's see what we find. We did find the Prometheus Tower, so there's either a Pandora or a Sphinx out here somewhere. I think we got another lost puzzle down in another Colosseum, amphitheater, whatever you want to call it here. Yeah, looks like it to me. All right, let's go solve this. This one's called hexahedral, hexahedral stacking. Hexahedral stacking, okay. There's water everywhere. We do have a hexahedron. Uh, looks like we need to power up this gate or receiver to start. Okay, that changes this. Then what? We have to somehow release it? We've got a red light, two hexahedrons. How would we... Can I manipulate this through... Can I pick this up and put it down through the window? I cannot. Okay. What are we trying to do here? Yeah, those those switch. So I guess I want to yeah, I want to bring it I want to bring the connector over to the window. And then I'm not sure. Can I manipulate the connector through the window? Like, if I do this... Can I come over here and move this? I can't. Now, theoretically, if I can get on top of two boxes, I can hop over this wall. Hmm. Can't go over there. What is the red light for? Is there, there doesn't seem to be anywhere I can jump. Why would I, why would I be stacking the two boxes? Oh, I think I get it, hold on. So we put this here. And connect it like that. Then we jump up here. And no, it's not enough for me to grab it from the other side. Uh, what can I do? I need a way to interrupt this beam or stop it when I'm on the other side so that this gate opens and I can go to the solution. I mean... Oh, I do get it. I do get it. Okay, hold on. So, we connect this to both. Both lights. Uh, Alright, hold on. Now we move a box. That interrupts the beam. There we go. Solved. Uh, and I need to bring a box with me to get up. Okay. That one... Mm, that one I lucked into a little bit, noticing... Okay. You're not entirely terrible at this. Oh, thanks, Melville. <laughs> I kind of lucked into that. I might have stared at this one for a long time before I realize what the what the catch was, what the trick was. New interface content. Is there even a future on social media? Uh, Zimmy Amvia, Zimmy Amvia 994 says, looks like a lot of people are getting excited about how things are going to change, but all I can see is another repetition of the same mistakes. Ecocide, hubris, self-destruction. Why would anything be different this time? Hmm. Maybe it won't be, but so what? Life goes on. All we can do is give it our best shot. Just need to get it right once and the cycle will be broken. You're right, I'm beginning to fear. You have to hope, even if it's not rational. So just have faith? Wasn't... Not having faith, the whole point of what Athena experienced with Elohim? Wasn't the stupidity of faith confirmed by this whole founder nonsense? 
It's not faith in something else, it's faith in yourself. Hmm. The point of Athena's experience in the simulation was questioning, not total aimless doubt. That's true. And I think it's... I think it applies here. This as well is true. But I like this as well. What do you mean? Shmilev says, to escape the simulation, Athena had to have faith of a kind too. Faith that finding out the truth was inherently worthwhile. Otherwise, she would have ended, we would have ended up like Sam Sarah or the messengers. And Zimmy Ambia says, okay, point taken. Maybe I'm being too negative. Maybe. It's not like there isn't anything to worry about. It's not like it's, it's all guaranteed to be smiley, happy people all the time. We have to do the work. We have to take the risk. We have to accept the responsibility. It's a choice we have to make. And not just once, but all day, every day, for the rest of our existence. That's the point. That's the lesson. Okay, we're done here. Uh, there's nothing we're interested in that's not on the compass. So let's keep going around and looking for compass points. I would like to find the second star puzzle. And then we know that the spark for Prometheus is northwest of the transportation hub. So we might go look for that at some point. All right, let's head to this question mark over here. Oh, there's one very close, so maybe we'll do this one first. And then go find the second one. What are we looking at here? It's nearby. It's a terminal. Okay, let's check it out. Jurassic Justice. From an AMA with Alexandra Drennan. It's impossible not to love any character played by Jeff Goldblum, of course, and Ian Malcolm gets some of the best lines. So the main reason he became an in-joke at IAN is just that he's memorable and funny. If we want to talk about what he represents on a more serious level, though, then I have to say that I personally think he's wrong. This neurotic fear that things will always go wrong, that we can never really have control over what we do, is misplaced. There's a legitimate critique of how the park operates, of science being subjected to the pursuit of profit. But that doesn't mean it can't be done differently. And if you'll excuse me for going full nerd here for a moment, why treat bringing back the non-avian dinosaurs as some kind of transgression? The extinction of these magnificent creatures wasn't some sort of intentional step forward. It was just a random catastrophe. If we can strike a blow at the obvious cruelty of the universe, that's an act of human justice. It's no less wrong than bringing back species we've accidentally driven to extinction. Horrible things happen all the time. Evolution favors survival, not beauty. If we can make the universe more beautiful, if we can add to biodiversity and bring back things that were lost, we absolutely should. Hell, maybe one day we terraform a planet and populate it with dinosaurs. But this time, we give them an asteroid defense system. Take that, Mother Nature. <laughs> Athena comments, This is the Alexander Drennan that I love most. Dreaming of all the good we humans could do in the world. I try to hang on to that. Here we have an excerpt from Orthodoxy by G.K. Chesterton. But the expansion of which I speak was much more evil than all this. I have remarked that the materialist, like the madman, is in prison. In the prison of one thought. These people seemed to think it singularly inspiring to keep on saying that the prison was very large. The size of this scientific universe gave one no novelty, no relief. The cosmos went on forever, but not in its wildest constellation could there be anything really interesting. Anything, for instance, such as forgiveness or free will. So these expanders of the universe had nothing to show us except more and more infinite corridors of space lit by ghastly suns and empty of all that is divine. Cornelius comments, Here Chesterton's imagination, normally so powerful, fails him utterly. 
The problem is that he's not interested in the universe, and so not only does he fail to see, he fails to even look. Miranda. He finds what he expected to find. Athena. Exactly. And so he misses not only the grandeur of the universe, but the miracle that is magnified by contrast, that forgiveness and free will do exist within people. Lastly, we have Atlas 3. From the Atlas Variations by Athanasios, number 121. When Heracles came upon Atlas, the Titan had grown old and tired. I have borne the weight of the celestial spheres for a billion years, he said. All the comings and goings of mortals, the tragedies of chance, the pointless wars, have left me weak. Soon I will falter and the celestial spheres will fall and shatter. You must take my place. But Heracles was hesitant. I am young and strong and virile. I have many women yet to bed and many wondrous feats yet to perform. What a waste it would be to spend my life holding up the world instead. And yet it must be done. So what choice do I have? Saddened by the imminent loss of his heroic life, Heracles went for one last swim in the Ionian Sea. There, on storied Ithaca, he met a clever old man of many devices. The answer you seek, son of Zeus, does not lie within you. Rather, it lies in the world around you, and in what you can make of it. And so Heracles used his divine strength to build two great pillars of stone, which even today hold up the sky, and Atlas was liberated forever. Hmm. I do like that. So, I guess the Atlas variations were a number of different versions of the story of Atlas and Heracles that Athanasios wrote. And in this one, Hercules uses his ability to see the world around him, to construct, to change, to build to replace Atlas with the stone pillars and free him, and also, therefore, himself. It's a story about human ingenuity, and I guess thinking outside the box? I quite like that one. All right, what else have we got? We got another question mark to the north here, the northeast. Ah, the Sphinx. How do we reach you, Queen of Mysteries? How do we get to you? Not this way, it doesn't look like, unless there's a staircase in the walls. No, I don't think so. No, okay, so we gotta come at you from the other side, huh? All right, we can do that. More sprinting across the uh, grassy grounds here till we find our way up. To the Mistress of Mysteries, the Regina of Riddles, the Sphinx herself. All right, give me your clue. What are we looking for here? Uh, one of the arenas with a bunch of hands leading up, and then there's an X right there. It looks like one switch in one of the arenas full of hands somewhere. So there's a lot of these arenas we found. I don't know that I was paying enough attention. I don't think we've seen this. I feel like I would remember it. And then there's a switch at the base. Okay. All right, we'll keep an eye out for it. Let's keep moving. What else have we got? We've got puzzles two and three over this way. Let's check around the edges a little bit, because we have no idea where that arena is going to be. Except that it's probably not down there. Got these big support structures, but I don't think we can get inside them anywhere. Maybe we head to puzzle one. It's nearby. So like here's one of the arenas, but I don't see any hands reaching up inside it. So that's not what we're looking for. 
Let's see, we got two, three, and a question mark. I do see this. Let's check this out. In the simulation, I found myself thinking how hard it must have been for Alexandra to die without knowing if her sacrifices were worth it. It seemed like a tragic end to an inspiring, meaningful life. But now I realize her whole life must have been a struggle. To maintain that faith in humanity when so many people around her insisted that humans are evil, worthless, when they were so lost in self-hatred that they would call their own species a virus. How did she do it? How did she maintain her faith when they were so determined to hate themselves? So determined to reject every solution, every analysis, every step towards controlling the forces that were causing their problems when they rejected even the concept of progress itself and then patted themselves on the back for it as if that was original. When I look at the archives now, all I can see is that their leaders were short-sighted idiots and their intellectuals were unimaginative cowards. All they could offer people was a downward trend. Fewer rights, fewer freedoms, fewer resources for anything that mattered. They must have hated Alexandra and everything she stood for. So how? How did she have so much faith? Yeah, she was indeed a remarkable woman. I think we're in the right place here. I'm not quite sure. It's under one of the hands. Looks like it's supposed to be sort of here-ish. Can I come back here? There it is. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, that is nice. I'm so glad that we found that. All right, so that's one star down. And then we're near the transport, aren't we? Maybe we can go look for the other one. It was... It, the spark was pretty much... Because he's over there, right? It was pretty much due northeast of the transport. Was where it seemed like... Or I guess northwest. It was in this direction. So, like, between... It was pretty much... We're halfway between the cardinal directions, so the, the spark is somewhere, like, in this direction. I wonder if I can find it and we can do the chase. And then we'll have found everything we need to find and we can just follow the compass to everything else. The spark should be somewhere along this path. I don't know if we'll see it, though. Where could it be? Somewhere along here. So like, maybe, oh, I see it, I see it, it's on that finger. It's right there. Nice. Excellent, okay. So with that, the only things in the entire game that I think I have to search for now are the couple missing stratons, and I'm not even sure which I'm not even sure which areas they're in, so that's going to take a while. But we're going to revisit every area uh, to do the gold gates, so we'll have a chance to look for Stratton then. All right. Lead me on your chase, Blue Spark, and I shall follow. Like a hound on the hunt. And let you be the most devious of foxes. Nevertheless, I shall persist. Do your worst. What's up, Yakut? Chasing a blue spark. Talk to you later. Get back here, you sneaky little blue bastard. No, don't cheat me. Where are you going? Where did you go? You're on top of a building. Okay. Ooh, interesting. How would I be getting up there? How would I be getting up there? I think we'll have to do it from inside the puzzle, which is interesting. Because it would likely mean we could have jailbroken something from this puzzle. If there is, there's a way up there from inside... 
Okay, all right, I see you. I see you up there. How do I get you? Well, let's take this opportunity to solve the puzzle. It looks like, oh, there's a fan here. Okay, not quite enough to get up anywhere interesting. Let's see. Uh, sorry, what was this puzzle called? Mobile instruments. All right. Well, we can see this. That gets us a box. We can get to here. Oh, we got a platform too. I need another copy of myself. So where's the other me for using this? Where's the other me? Where would I get another me? Um... Okay, not quite as certain about what's going on here. I think we're done with this for now, although... Why is this here, this window? I'm not sure. Okay, I'm starting to see. We can't... Uh, we probably put this on the thing, right? Or no, we, we put it... Do we put it on the platform? What happens if we do that? That's not high enough. Not sure what the platform's for. But that doesn't work. Can we put you on the... No, I don't think so. Let's hop up here. I don't see... Hmm. How are we going to do this? I guess we need to get... We need to get... We need to get this in there. So that it can power... Both gates? How would that work? What the hell is the platform for? This is only useful to hold somebody else up. And there's not another me in here for me to use that way. There's not another body, so... What the heck are we doing? Is there another body in here that I've just missed? Like... Standing in a corner somewhere, or... Huh. Can I... See the blue light through this? I can. So, like, I could do this, kind of. But then we can't... We can't open this. The platform is really throwing me. I don't know what that's for. I'm also not sure why I want to get up here. I mean, I guess I can pull this with... Oh, now I see. Okay. So I can use this to get this at least. All right, off you go. Where are you headed? I feel like I got to come back to six and do it later. I got to follow this thing before I lose it. Okay, it's going to wait for me there. All right, let me go back. You're staying there, right? Yeah, okay. Let me go back and see if I can figure this puzzle out. Uh, now that's trapped up there. This doesn't center properly, so like I can't I can't stand on the platform. It's really weird. I might have to do a reset here to get the box back. Now I hope that didn't reset my little spark friend. No, he's still there. Good. Okay. So, one, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, hexahedron goes out the door. 
Then I can jump up here. I still don't really know what the platform is for. But I can grab this. I guess. I, like, I, I still can't really target that from here because the, now the wall's on the wrong side. Can I jump up here? It feels like there's supposed to be a use for the platform that I'm not seeing. Like, to get me up really wicked high. I'm not sure about this one, guys. Because... Being up there doesn't help us power this gate. We need to get the light through here, like from from this corner right here, but then that blue gate needs to be open. All right, I might need to do earlier puzzles to figure this out. There might be a way to bring a copy here or have another. This, yeah, the platform really confuses me. What is the point of this? I mean, I guess... Let's say I pop this down and then pop this down. And then I grab the platform and step onto... Does everything come with me? I guess it does. So now I'm personally holding the hexahedron, right? And it's got the, uh, it's got the, okay. So I've got, I'm balancing, while I hold the platform, I can balance the hexahedron with the, with the light on it above my head. But how does that help me? Oh, I guess I can be a moving platform now. Yeah, okay, that's it then. That's, that's the solution. So we connect this to this to start. And I guess we can do that as well. We plop this here. No, nope, turn off. Uh, we put the box on here. We keep connections and put this here. We turn it on. We lever it on top of ourselves. And now we're a walking connection. So we can go past and drop that like that. Okay. That's the solution. That's a weird one. Took me a minute, but I did figure it out. Give me credit. <laughs> Give me credit. I demand it. I demand that you credit me with figuring that out. Hey, Wonkei. I wanted to take a moment to talk to you. I know we're all worried about Byron, especially Al, and I don't want to minimize what happened. But now that the mayor's here, I'm afraid they're going to take this and turn it into a reason to bury their head in the sand. Yes, Byron was rash. He wanted to find Athena so badly that it made him blind. But the thing is, he was right. He was completely and utterly right about what this technology could mean to us. I didn't see it at first, but now it couldn't be more clear to me. The theory of everything is the future. And if we reject it, we're condemning ourselves to a slow death. I agree. I'm glad. You know, I didn't even realize how much I'd limited my own imagination. How I talked myself into just accepting this incredibly poor future we'd been offered. A future where things just keep getting slightly worse every day. And we accept it because... Because we're ashamed of ourselves. Not of something we've done, but just... Of our existence. Like we're a virus on this planet. Like our humanity is a sin. I'm so tired of it, Wong K. I kept my head down. I focused on fixing things. But that's all I ever did. I never improved anything. I never built anything new. And when I imagine going on like this for thousands of years, that's a fate worse than death. It really is. We either live and grow and expand boldly and proudly, or we might as well switch ourselves off. We'll find a way. We better. 
because I don't think I can handle the alternative. Yeah, I really like Yakut, but I think I admire Melville the most. She's had the most character growth over the course of the story. All right, we're running a little bit long here, so let's try and wrap up the two star puzzles. We found the switch, so the Sphinx star is just waiting for us. And this star, we just have to follow this little blue spark all the way home. If it wants to keep running around like a crazed child, it can. Doesn't matter. We'll follow it. We'll find it. We'll bring it home. Oh, I want to see what that is, but another day. Another episode. Getcha. No matter where you go. All right. Welcome home, little spark. It's been a long journey, but you made it. So what are your last words, Prometheus, before the end of the game? I don't think we're going to see another puzzle like you. God appears, and God is light, to those poor souls who dwell in night. But does a human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? Hmm. God is light, but not necessarily human form. God is in the loving kindness we show each other, in the forgiveness, in the empathy, in the compassion, that's the only real God there can ever be. All the rest is just myth, fantasy, and the abrogation of responsibility for ourselves. God is a way, I think, to push responsibility for our choices and actions onto a distant father figure who one day promises to hold us accountable, but not today, not while we're alive. And I think that's another form of childishness. Some people use God as an excuse for their behavior, using his name to justify atrocities and contempt, anger, hostility, to give up on generosity and charity, right? God is a blank slate that you can make whatever you want it to be. It is ultimately a childish idea. A refuge for those who can't face their own morality or their own mortality. Who can't accept that the only person who's responsible for their life is themselves. Which isn't to shit on the faith of people who are genuinely... Genuinely faithful and... Honest in their faith, I guess? People like, you know, like Mr. Rogers, I guess, would be a good example. He was a deeply faithful person who believed in the tenets of his faith, honestly and sincerely. Tried to make the world a better place. But then, a person like that doesn't need God. I think Mr. Rogers would have been who he was if he was raised in any other religion, or in no religion at all. I think he was just a fundamentally good person. So, I don't know. I, I mean... I think it's up to each person to choose what they believe. But I hope that most people believe something that helps them make the world better than they found it before they leave. Anyway, let's see what Pandora, or the Sphinx, has to say in her final message to us. A hammer forges, and a hammer breaks. But who can know the heart of the blacksmith? 
Hmm. All right. On that note, guys, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we'll wrap up the remainder of the puzzles, taking a look at what we have to do here. We found Stratton. We've done the two stars and the two uh, lost puzzles, which means we have one through eight sub six that we still have to do. Oh, did we not find the lost lab yet? I guess we didn't. I thought we did. So we'll have to find the, the lab as well. But we'll, there's a couple terminals and the lab marked as question marks on the compass. So we'll likely find it next episode. Uh, until then, as always, thank you so much for watching. Man, this game is great, and it's coming near to its end. Uh, I do think the Gold Gate puzzles will probably take us multiple episodes to get through. But we're coming near to the end here. At the very least, we're going to head back to the megastructure and hopefully red rescue Byron. Uh, but again, all that we'll have to wait for next time. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.